In his place, Flint Hill Abbey, his big folly that he built up, he had 38 foot tall doors, and he actually employed a dwarf to stand in front of them to make them look even taller. <laughs> Our boy wasn't that demented. <laughs> but uh, I think it's been, uh, been such a good family friend, it's good to be enough. Uh, right, speaking of the man himself, there he is, in his full ill magnificence. When you walked into the palace, into the hallway, you were greeted with a life-sized version of this painting of Alexander posing like a haddy on the shop red tin sort of thing. And then you would turn the corner, go down a corridor, and there was a life-sized painting of Napoleon Bonaparte facing you. He was a great admirer of the Bonapartes, so much so that while his son, William, was in love with the Duchess of Athol and wanted to marry her, Alexander told the turn around and said, No, you know, son, you're marrying Princess Marie of Baden. Why, Dad? Because then we've got a direct blood link with the Bonaparte family. There we go. Spy the wife. There is Susan Bateford, the Duchess, at her piano. She was a concert pianist who would give recitals over at the palace and would invite the various composers and performers of the day. The most high profile, the great Friday Chopin, stayed for a few nights in Hamilton and gave a couple of recitals. I went back home to Poland and told everybody the Hamiltons were the maddest, craziest people you'd ever met. <laughs> Every single one of them was a screw loose. <laughs> now, we do get asked. Is he still in here? No. That is the black marble plinth. Upon which sat the Egyptian sarcophagus our boy was laid to rest in. One of two that he had. His other ones in the Kelvin Grove. Uh, I thought I'd seen that before. Mm -hmm. But this one was acquired due to a wee deal with the British Museum going awry. In the mid-1830s, the British Museum thought they were buying a proper royal Egyptian sarcophagus. £632, 8 shillings and 6 pence of taxpayers' money was used to buy it. Guess who was the most trusted trustee who did the deal? Alexander. Unfortunately, when the great crate arrived in the museum and he opened it up, they found they had been sold a ringer. Uh, was a genuine sarcophagus from 600 BC. It wasn't a royal one. But with the various copies of transcripts of the letters with the finger pointing, out comes a classic quote among them about the Duke being humbugged by those rascally Frenchmen. It's what bought in Paris. Fire that, or the old boy knew exactly what he was up to all along. Because 632 pounds, eight shillings and six pence of Hamilton money found its way to the British Museum. The British Museum could refund the treasury. Everybody's happy. That casket is now in 12 Portland Square, the Duke's apartment. Which must have been a great talking piece when you walked into his flat. Well, I love that number, that's back in the place. Those sarcophagus. Now, the wee soul was in it. But he did decide then, ah, it's befitting the old magnificent old magnificent casket. All the way to rest in. And being a great study of Egyptology. So he did try to get some things, maybe he should try to get a But when he died, As I say, that plinth is in place, but the floor still had to be laid, the dome still had to be completed, but it still did service in here. Full ceremony, full regalia. Unfortunately, before the game, there was a couple of things to do, because that casket was six feet long, custom made for a woman of five foot six. And he stood six foot two. And there was he had shut down a couple of inches, but he was about six feet. Now his body was prepared in the proper Egyptian way. There are three variations of the Hindu god man. Now, before they could do anything, the stonemasons working the building hauled out the stone as much as they could without destroying the synthetic this lovely green porphyry. Story number one. We twist his feet, and we jump the pit on him. One side of that's on top of him, he's not coming back out. And he is quoting a couple of books. Last words, talk, Kayla. Yeah. Say it again. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Do, keep the because the camera will pick it up. Right, wait a minute. You're over there, which is way right, right around to here. Right, Kayla, speak. Speak! Talk! Say something! You're rubbish!
County 10. That's amazing. Isn't it? Cold. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. You feel it. That's where the draft's coming from. Feel that. That is freezing. It's coming from in there. Basically what you've got is you've got the basic notes, you've got the hit list, and I'll just say this playing this wee drawing as well. That is the survey that was done in the 1970s. So this is where they think I'm making all this up. That's the five coal seams, the 200 metres down. Right. There's the cottage, 2.93.5 metres. That's the wee one that's feet, over there yep. next to the toilet. Uh -huh. kind of used to be the old toilet. And 5.4, 5.6 metres, or 18 feet for the mausoleum. You also found there's a fault line runs across Strathclyde Park. So if you ever think there's an earthquake taking place down here, uh -huh. it's happening at Strathclyde Park because the fault line runs across it. God almighty. So is that how deep this is? Down 200 metres, eh? From that? Mm -hmm. Jeez, oh. Which is why when they built Asda over there, they had to spend two weeks just filling the ground in underneath it just to give it a solid enough base. A solid base. Or else would have cut the ribbon and seen Asda disappearing down a mine shaft. <laughs> Stand in the middle. Let's stand in the middle. That's an echo now, I think. Right, shout, just shout once. Shout hello. Hello. <laughs> what? Cool, isn't it? It's quite the place. 